Hello everyone and welcome to a, a video I, I really didn't expect to make. I've just recorded what I thought was going to be tonight's video and it probably might still be, fingers crossed. Um, but something came to my attention. Now, uh, Frontier have just posted this on their forums and uh, actually it was brought to my attention because uh, Evo Squared uh, posted it on Twitter. So thank you for doing this. <laughs> or at least posting what you thought. Just, ah, check this out. It's like, wait a minute, video idea. Um, so... We're going to get into, you've probably seen the thumbnail title, so you know what we're going to get into. But first, uh, let's build up the hype, shall we? So, as you can see, this is uh, the zoomed in version of their, their forum. So, we're just going to go over it really quickly. I don't want to make this too much of a long video because <laughs> money. Anyway, <laughs> welcome back, park managers. We are very excited to bring you a new Jurassic World Evolution 2 feature focus. Previously, we talked about the various improvements that have been made to the guide you can add to your parks. This week, we're taking a look at where you'll be building your parks. It's time to talk about environments. Something that we've uh, often speculated, like, is there a big difference? Because, you know, we've had stuff in the past, like the different islands, and are they, it's just, you know, Takano and Sauna and stuff, and they really felt the same. But actually, in Evolution 2, you know, we're getting all these different uh, environments, and we don't really know too much about them, apart from maybe the storms will be different. You know, you get a snowstorm, you get a dust storm and stuff like that. Uh, or at least in my head, anyway. Uh, Jurassic World Evolution 2 will let you build blah, 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 blah. Desert, here we go. Desert. The desert environment will be the first place you go when you start up Jurassic World Evolution 2's campaign mode. So, interesting. First thing to know. Uh, you will be able to build a desert... A <laughs> I keep saying desert now. A desert park in Sandbox Challenge and Chaos Theory modes. It's inspired by the real-life Sun... What? Sonoran? So oh, Sonoran. Sonoran? Sonoran? Sonoran Desert. Okay, well, that's, that's uh, we're learning so much today. Um, with its dry climate and flat terrain. Expect to see a lot of cacti and shrubs that would usually thrive in desert environments alongside dirt, sand, and the occasional rock and tumbleweed. Uh, there won't be a lot of rain, but you may be forced to tackle the odd sandstorm. So that's, you know, it's a bit like what we've had before. Instead of a thunderstorm, it'll be a sandstorm. Uh, which can gum up the works on your vehicles and cause a bit of damage. Interesting. So that's what's going to be the difference here. Uh, you'll see the sandstorm coming in, growing in density as it whips up the dirt and sand around your dinosaurs and buildings. Interesting. So you have a bit of a time to prepare. Um, it'd be interesting to see, and the, you know, you've got the, the far off look in the environment, a bit like you can see in the San Diego here, but you can just see like a huge cloud of wall coming towards you. That would be so cool. Um, so there we go. So that's desert so not too much different you know it's all right uh tiger or taijia whatever you want to call it uh basically like tundra uh the taijia environment is inspired by mountains forests of, oh the mountainous forests of british columbia and canada uh you'll get to build and house dinosaurs in a taiji environment in campaign sandbox and challenge mode uh not you'll notice chaos theory mode uh, it's quite a different environment from the desert, offering shades of green and auburn pines, in addition to snow-covered peaks in the background. Expect sunshine and dense forestation around you as you build your parks and facilities. Taija introduces one of the other new calamity types, snowstorms. Interesting. Now, we've seen this with the first campaign that I was able to play when it was the uh, Carnotauruses. Um, although I didn't see, you know, it was sad, it was snow, but I didn't really notice too much of how it affected me because I didn't really have a park. Uh, when a snowstorm sweeps in over the area, you'll see thick snowflakes falling from the sky and snow piling up on the ground and on building surfaces. If you've ever wanted to see dinosaurs in the snow, this is the environment for you. So no idea how that affects you, just that it's an aesthetic. I'm assuming it'll be more than that, though. Uh, and you get a lovely little picture there. Um, nothing new. I think we've seen this. This shows some sort of T-Rex uh, looking dinosaur there. I'm really not too sure what that is. But the Avery is being highlighted in the lagoon. Uh, what, and maybe this is one of the first images that showed the lagoon. I don't think it was. But definitely, definitely one of the second or first uh, pictures. And Temperate. Uh, this is where we get into the meat and bones of the video. So, temperate. As we continue our journey through Jurassic World Evolution 2's environment, we come to the temperate environment. Warmer than taiga. Or te taiji. Whatever you call I don't know. Words. Uh, but not as warm as a desert. It could very well be the perfect spot to build a dinosaur park or facility. You'll head into temperate environments in campaign, challenge mode, and sandbox mode. Again, not chaos theory. Um, which is interesting. Okay. Uh, exploring. So, you've got three environments, and only one of them will be in chaos theory, meaning, you know, San Diego. Um, exploring it from 
from different locations based on the mode. The temperate environment is characterized by lush and leafy trees and a warm sun shining down from the blue skies. While there will be less snow, you should expect some mist and maybe the odd rainstorm. So rainstorm, snowstorm and desert storm basically. Uh, what you really need to be careful of though are the tornadoes interesting okay so we get tornadoes in this one uh and that so this is the most dangerous one to build in i assume um but it'd be interesting if there was like a, a perk to that maybe you know um having the 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 forest for the uh, herbivores might be easier, but you know, you've got tornadoes to contend with. Uh, and as you can see in this image, you get a close up of how the gyrosphere or the tours work going over paths, which is lovely. Because um, I don't know if too many people have highlighted that, but it's definitely there. I mentioned, I mentioned it once, I think. Uh, generators, but really, and I'll probably bring up a better image because this one's a bit uh, pixelated when I've zoomed in. There is a lagoon. And in this lagoon, um, not only do you have the hatchery and stuff, but there is a shape. There's a shape there. Now, if we think about our creatures that we have, we have Mosasaurus, mystery Mosasaurus, it could be a Talosaur. We've got the Plesiosaurs. We've recently had confirmed a Light Pluridon. So you've got Mosasaur, Light Pluridon, Plesiosaur, and Elasmosaur. Now, Elasmosaur might have its own unique animation because that was lumped in with Light Pluridon. And um, I think he said that he wanted them to have unique animations or at least, you know, to be more realistic. So I wouldn't be surprised if you if we see Light Pluridon with a similar uh, paint scheme to walking with dinosaurs, but obviously I can't do it because, you know, copyright. But the shape that is sticking out of that water is a shark shape. It's a shark fin shape, more specifically. Um, and I'm, I'm really trying to think of, like, no, it can't be. It, it can't be, right? It can't be a Megalodon because, you know, that's not dinosaurs. It's prehistoric, but we're sticking with you know, dinosaurs in this era. Um, you know, even though we have snow, we have no mammoths, we have no saber-toothed cats. It's all Jurassic, Triassic, Cretaceous time periods. And we know that Megalodon was not in those periods. But if you look at it, I'm like, you've got in the middle here, you've got the shark feeder. Um, now, I don't know if that has anything to do with this, because to the right of it, you've got a fish feeder. Um, and I did make a Mosasaur feeder in my playthrough and had to go from the outside of the lagoon into the middle and that's where the Mosasaur jumped up and ate it, right? But this time, whatever this shark fin shape, it can't be a Mosasaur going back down. That's my only thing I'm thinking it could be because the, the on the right side, there is no uh, pole for the shark to come out. It has to be a shark fin. Which means, now we haven't, we, we've kind of been, we've got a lot of aquatics, let's be honest. A lot of aquatics. Uh, more than I was expecting at launch, anyway. You know, uh, Plesiosaur, Attenboroughsaurus, Mosasaur, Mystery Mosasaur, Lyplorodon, Elasmosaur. Well, that's six out of a 70 dinosaurs we're going to get at base. 72-ish, I think it is. Maybe one of them is Megalodon. And I wouldn't be surprised if it was Megalodon. I, I mean, now that we've got Lagoons... It's always been the biggest thing. Jurassic Park Builder, Megalodon. Jurassic World, the game, Megalodon. They all came to it, and Jurassic World Live, of course, doesn't have it because it doesn't have aquatics. But this game has the, the potential, and I'm excited to see a Megalodon take on a Mosasaur, because a Megalodon would definitely win that, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And again, we're talking about Mosasaur from Jurassic World, but it has to be. And I cannot think, like, a Plesiosaur putting its fin out the water, maybe? A like Pluridon? Put, like breaking its neck and just sticking its snoot out like a mosasaur if it was to do that it would you'd see the rest of it it has i can't honestly let me know in the comments down below am i going insane and that's a mosasaur it has to be anyway anyway uh, and and finally finishing it off you have the tropical it wouldn't quite be an authentic Jurassic world gaming experience without a tropical environment inspired by the hawaiian islands of uh Oahu and Kauai. <laughs> i think it's oh um i'm butchering that name. Uh, the tropical environment isn't featured in the campaign, uh, but will depict Isla Nublar and Sauna in Chaos Theory and Sandbox modes. So there, 
I'm pretty sure Isla Nublar and Sauna in Chaos Theory modes is talking about Jurassic Park what if scenario and Jurassic Park 3 what if scenario. So we're definitely going to be going back to those and Sandbox uh, because Sandbox will pretty much let you choose whatever, I'm, I'm sure. As you would expect, this environment is sunny and quite warm, offering up a beautiful climate for both of your guests and dinosaurs, but mindful that there's potential of tropical storms and hurricanes. Heavy swirling rain will come blowing in on howling winds, causing damage to its surroundings. Don't forget to keep some extra shelters open just in case. And the, oh God, I didn't realize we had another one. Alpine. Finally, there's the Alpine environment. Large mountains towering over green hills and valleys and a bright sun shines down from a blue sky and the Yellowstone inspired environment. You'll get to play around in the Alpine environment in campaign, challenge mode and sandbox. Again, not chaos theory. The Alpine environment's bright sunshine is broken up now and again by some light rain. And you may need to contend with the odd snow and rainstorm when building up these environments. Uh, and then that's it for Jurassic World Evolution 2 feature focus uh, of the five environments we've shown you. Which one stood out to you? Uh, just think if there's anything extra. Nope, more pre-orders, 9th of November. There you have it. So, I think they've deliberately put in Megalodon. Now, they do this. They, they, they leave little Easter eggs in. I mean, even if you look at this, there's like a hay bale or like a, a semicircle lump in the, uh, it could just be a rock to be fair, in the parasaur enclosure there. It's, it's more than likely a rock, I, I would assume. Um, but I, let me know what you think, man. I, th I think that's a Megalodon. I, I really don't see it being anything else. Uh, I'm, it, <laughs> Maybe they didn't notice it, but Frontier are very clever about sneaking in little things here and there. Um, like they've always, like with the lagoon, they showcase the lagoon in an image like this, but it was very slim, very slim. And this time again, they're like, you know, let's put a Megalodon in. Let, let, we're going to hide this to the end, but if somebody can spot it, they get the views. <laughs> but anyway, guys, leave me know, let me know what you think. Uh, I don't want to put this on too long. It'll not be heavily edited either because it doesn't have to be. Um, and hopefully I'll, you know, have another video out tonight. We'll see. We'll see if you're good. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. Tell me what your thoughts are. I, 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 don't, I haven't done this for clicks, I don't think. I think that is legit. It it can't be. Let's zoom in on that. It's, it's a Megalodon. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Until next time, I'll see you cuties later. Oh, bye-bye.